So this is day one of the great spinning experiment. And what we're gonna be doing today is looking at biomechanics to see if I can make a spin work at all. So this is kind of what I think about when I think about these spinning attacks. I think about a cut like that. Now, the biggest thing here, honestly, more than blade work, is the footwork involved. The footwork involved in a spin is kind of complicated because normal footwork is linear or offline. And this spin has to be kind of offline and linear. I have to go forward, slip step, and then come forward again. This happens in a lot of other martial arts, this kind of slip step, and it also happens in tricking on parkour. So let's take a look at the footwork really quick. The basic spinning attack that I see done the most, and the one that feels the most comfortable to me, is this forward spinning attack. And the way I do it is I step forward with my front foot, I turn, I step back, I turn, and I come forward again. The problem with this movement is it doesn't actually generate very much acceleration until the last moment, and it's very predictable. So here's what it looks like. Step, step, go. And frankly, I don't know why I wouldn't just do this instead, but let's take it a look. So step, step, go. I'm, I'm off balance because the sword is throwing me off, if I'm honest. I feel myself starting to go this way. Uh, I can do this movement without the sword, and I don't, go to the side, but with the sword, I'm starting to feel myself go off balance. Step, step, go. Oh, that's really rough. Let's do it this way. It's getting better. I still don't like it. All right, so I could kind of see, if we're looking at this like a viable attack, this first attack is to get them backwards maybe. Step, step. The problem with this is it violates the rule of sword moves first. So the rule of sword moves first is my sword goes and my body follows. And with a spin, my body necessarily has to go first. And the reason this is dangerous is because it means I can't bail out. So when sword moves first, if I move my sword first and my opponent does something, I can pull my sword back and defend, and I don't have to step. My sword moves, it clears the threat, my body follows. In the spin, watch what happens. Sure, my sword moves first, but now my body moves in front of my sword. And this is where it becomes dangerous. And now my body has to move first and my sword has to follow. So we're, we're breaking that rule. And this is one of the reasons why a spin is dangerous is because my body is in front of my sword and I'm not guarded. My back is turned. So let's see if we can try and fix that. I don't think we can. Oh, that was awful. I, so what I tried to do there was I tried to bring my sword in front of my body and it created a lot of torsion on my hips, or on my, uh, my midsection. So it was here, I tried to bring my sword around first, but you can see my feet are in the wrong position for this to work, and my structure's all messed up. Uh, ideally, I wanna have my structure pointing towards my opponent, but in this spin, look at where my structure points. Look at what happens here. Boom, now I'm pointing this way. I'm not pointing at you anymore. Now I'm definitely not pointing at you. And when I end, yeah, I am pointing at you, but it was rough getting there. So let's just see if we can make this work. Boom. I felt a little bit better, not great. Boom, boom. Yeah, it just doesn't feel good. I have another idea. What if I have to spin to face another opponent? So this is something we're gonna cover later because I think this is the most viable use of a spinning attack. But again, it goes back to that situational thing. So like I said in the previous video, in the introduction video, uh, the great reverse group experiment, a lot of people were like, well, what if you were in this situation where you couldn't do X, Y, Z? I don't like those arguments because they're tailor-made to make the technique work, which is kind of coming at it from the wrong perspective. But for this, being surrounded by people isn't an unrealistic situation. If I've got someone here and someone there, and I have to cut at this person and switch to that person, that is a 180 spin. It's not a full 360, but let's say I cut here, pivot, cut there. It's like a half a spin and it's more realistic. It doesn't quite fit into what we're testing here, but it might be worth looking at. So if I have to cut at this person, cut there, cut back there, that is technically a 360 degree spin, but with a purpose behind it. So I attack this person, I block over here, I come back and I thrust there. It technically fits within the experiment, but I don't think that it's the spirit of the experiment. And I wouldn't really call it a spinning attack. I think we need to stick with the parameters of this being that it is a forward attack at one point. It doesn't have to be forward, it could be backwards, I suppose. Could be going backwards at somebody, that's fine. It's a 360 degree attack where I start facing my opponent and I end facing my opponent, and there's nothing being done in between. Uh, we'll look at that other caveat and see if we can fit that in later, because Montante swordsmanship actually does use that. In Montante swordsmanship, there is a lot of switching like this, and, and we're gonna get to that in a later section. But mechanically, let's go back to where we were. So trying to figure out how to make this feel 
less terrible. So right now I'm mostly doing an overhead cut. Cut, this is a Zorn how. I'm cutting down to here. I'm continuing and I'm throwing essentially another Zorn how. Interestingly enough, there is a spinning attack that is displayed in some of the manuals against a spear. And the idea is you attack, you attack the spear to stop it from coming. You rotate and you attack again, kind of keeping the spear at bay, making so it can't hit you as you make your rotation. And that is actually a use that we are gonna cover later because there's a caveat. It's a caveat that is against a very specific situation and it does technically work, but it doesn't really disprove my argument that a spinning attack in a fight isn't a good idea. So we'll come back to that. I'm sorry I'm rambling a bit. I'll edit this out. Boom, boom. And I do feel the need to chamber this twice. So if you watch, I'm not just leaving my sword out here and bringing it back around because there's almost no power here. If I just leave the sword out, there's, there's only rotational power in there. There's no forward power. And realistically, the power I want comes from that forward power and the hips, like this. Uh, I, I'm not swinging this down like it's a sledgehammer. I don't even think sledgehammers work that way. So I'm needing to pump this. There's one cut, I kind of collapse here and throw it again, which doesn't feel very good. Cut, collapse, cut. If I did it the other way where I just left it out, Yes, that feels a lot better, but it has no power behind it. So let me show you the difference there. The first one, cut, collapse, cut. Cut, collapse, cut. There's power. The second one, cut, cut. There's no power, and it's very slow. It's much slower. So if you actually look at the biomechanics of spinning things, when you look at tricking, you'll notice that when people throw a spin in order to get more rotational momentum, to spin faster, they will actually pull in. When you see trickers, they'll go to a trick, they'll tuck, and then they'll untuck when they wanna slow down. So if I was throwing a spinning attack, I wouldn't wanna leave this out here because it would actually slow me down. I would want to pull it in and then pop it back out. It's more complicated and it feels worse, but it's a more viable option to do that tuck. Cut, tuck, cut. Now we're only doing an overhead attack right now. We could do a side to side attack. That would be something like I cut here and I spin around to the other side. I find this to honestly be worse because arguably I could be out of distance and I could just kind of cut at you and flip around and cut and I'm in less danger. In this situation, I'm cutting at somebody, which means I'm in Krieg, I have attacked them. So we are in distance, in Krieg, they can hit me back. And instead of parrying or doing something else or retreating, I've decided to turn my back and spin the other direction and cut here. If my opponent doesn't move, what you'll notice is this attack, as I spin, I come closer. So now I'm hitting further up the blade, which isn't ideal anyway, because I wanna hit further down here, but it also puts me closer and it puts me in more danger. I could try and do this as I spun out back the other way, but again, I am taking a retreat, but honestly, I think that one's worse because if I'm here and I spin towards my opponent, I might be able to jam them up with my back and cut here with a very weak cut on the strong. I think it's a bad idea. I think it, it doesn't make much sense. And if they know anything about grappling, they're just gonna, they're gonna have your back. And you know, if you know anything about grappling, you know having somebody's back is, it's bad for you. But this one's worse to me because if I'm here and I turn to cut out, what I'm doing is I'm creating enough distance for them to easily step forward and stab me in the back. I'm not jamming up their sword and I'm trying to hit them like this. There are a couple of instances where a spin works in a sword fight, but most of them are not attacks. It's we come together, we jam up as we're passing we spin out and attack back. And that's when my opponent is, so I've got my opponent on this side. As they start to go this way around me, I can track them and cut like this. So technically it is a spin, but it's mostly tracking my opponent. Now you could do that same thing and spin out the other way. It's a little slower and it's not as, I don't think it's as useful, but it's still safer because again, your opponent is jammed up on you and they don't really have a way to strike you. You're both passing each other. It's not a good situation either way. This, I think, this spin, and I see this a lot in choreography, is worse, in my opinion, than this spin. So those are kind of the spins that I think of, but let's see if we can think of any other spins. Uh, we already kind of talked about a backwards spin, 
with Unterhaus, I suppose. That's interesting. I don't think it would do much. But cut here, cut there. Let's see if I can do something else. Cut here, cut there. That's kind of interesting. I don't think it's very useful, but so the first one's an undercut. I chamber and I cut again back here. It's bad because I'm turning my back, but the second cut's not bad, right? Like stepping back and cutting like this, this isn't terrible. It could be, uh, I could be displacing somebody's sword. It does, it, it would be much easier to step here, step here. I, I suppose if you thought about it, like I need to get my sword back to Vam Tag on this side, and it's kind of awkward if the sword's in between there, I could circle to catch my sword and throw it again. But again, I'm just giving my opponent my back while going backwards as presumably they're pursuing me. So that means I have an opponent who's pursuing me as I turn my back, boom, easy shot, easy win. We have a forward spin. We have a side to side spin. We have this kind of backwards spin. I think those are the main ones. Obviously we could do them from angles. I could spin on this side. So day one, just kind of looking at these, trying to figure out which ones feel the worst, which ones feel the best. Frankly, they all feel kind of bad. It's interesting because the second part of the spin isn't, isn't bad if I use control, right? This, that's just a standard Zornhau. This is mostly just a really complicated cut. The first cut misses, the second cut is a normal cut. I just added a silly spin. When I could have done one cut misses, second cut goes, or a better option honestly would be Cut misses thrust. So day one of the biomechanics, what I discovered was that there are essentially three different options for these cuts. There is a downward or diagonal cut that looks like this with a spin. There's a side to side cut that looks like this. You can also do that same cut coming forward and going backwards. And there is an undercut like this going backwards. Um, of those three, none of them felt great off the bat, but we're gonna go ahead and see if we can put them to use in sparring. To start off, we're just gonna do some buffer stuff just to do kind of proof of concept. This isn't definitive because they're not steel, but uh, I obviously have the advantage of reach and levels here. It shouldn't be an issue for me to win, but I'm gonna try and score with a full 360 degree spin. It can happen this way, it can happen this way, and it can happen this way, but it can't be a 180. It's gotta be 360. All right, here we go. I'm not going to adjust you. Oh, yeah, here we go. It technically went through, but it's just a golfer. Yeah, you got through. No, it was a golfer. It wouldn't have actually done it. It would just feel sort of in the end, right? I'm at an advantage because this is longer. This is harder for him. But that's not what we're testing. I think you actually might have landed that one. No, I missed. No. <laughs> it was short. It was interesting, no? Oh, my So one out of 20. Okay. Yeah, you got that. 